In this video, we are going to take a quick look at option we have to choose when editing a Cloud Run service. So let's go ahead and click at edit and deploy new revision. In here, we have a lot of options that we have to choose. Then let's start with the startup stable boost first. So basically, it's double the CPU allocated during the startup's time so we can learn more. And here, we know that you know, for CPU limit, this is the boosted CPU. For example, if we set the number of CPU is 1 here, the limits the CPU limits. So the boost CPU, the number of CPU allocated during the startup time is 2. And same with that, you know, in the, if we set the CPU limit is 2, then the boosted CPU, the number of CPU allocated during the start of time is 4. And yeah, this is some exception. Like it's the, just a review. And yeah, that's it. And we can easily check that. First, let's remove what we did in the last video. Revert setting and I'll push it. Then then run slow. Okay, then now we deploy a new version of our service without you know waiting for 50 seconds before our service available. So so in here you know that let back here and then refresh again or refresh again do here. So I won't use the startup CPU boost here and the number of CPU now is 1 then everything I keep as keep as is here so just we on just focus on the number of CPU and I don't stick as startup CPU boost I'll keep everything the same and I deploy a new version Now, take a look at the log. And what I want to see is the number of seconds that a service start. Something like this. And then, yes, the new container start. And let's see. So without the CPU, the startup CPU boost, the service needs around 16 seconds to fully serve request. Then let's edit this again. This time we will click at startup CPU boost. We keep everything the same and deploy it. Okay, let's check a lock again. Then this time, you know that this time the number of CPU allocated during the startup time will be doubled. So we set the CPU limit is one. So the number of CPU in the startup in the startup time should be two. And it should be faster this time. Okay, new instance to start it. And then, okay, this time it's only take around under 10 seconds. That's a very good feature. Okay, then take a look at it again. 
So the next one is CPU allocation. We already talked about this in the last video, so I'll skip it here. And then the next one is memory limit and CPU limit. Memory here is, is the memory to allocate to your instant. It's a memory limit. So if your instant exceeds the memory limit, it will be cracked and another instant will be recreated instead. And if we take a deeper look into the documentation here, we will see that the following count towards the available memory of your container instant. So the first thing is running the application executable here of Scott and allocating memory in your application process. But the thing I want to highlight here is, is writing files to file system. For example, if you write a log file into a file, so then in this situation, it will be counted towards the available memory. For example, if you config a log back to write a log into a file, then in Clarence environment, it will be counted as memory and the more log you write, the more memory is consumed. And you know, in the lifetime of your container, the, the memory increase, 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 and it reached the memory limits. And after that, it will be crashed. So make sure that you don't write anything in your file system when you run your service in Cloud Run. And another requirement, yeah, there's some requirement about Cloud Run that related the memory and the CPU. So for example, if you have more than eight gigabyte memory, the minimum CPU number of CPU required is four, something like that. For more information about the requirement of memory limits, you can take a look at this documentation. Then we move to go ahead and move to CPU. So we have the CPU here. So similar to memory, we also have some requirement about the CPU and memory. Like for example, if we want to have for CPU, at least we have to have two gigabyte memory and something like that here. Yes. For me personally, I prefer setting the number of CPU is two at least two, because I think that I can take the advantage of multi-threading here. So I'll leave it to here. Next is the request time out, the time within which a response must be returned. And by default, it will set 300 seconds, five minutes. And we can take a look at the documentation here. So what if we exit the request timeout. So the request, if a response is in return with a time specified, the request ends and error 504 is returned. One more thing is you must be aware of the framework, your service request timeout with Cloud Run request timeout. Yeah, you must take it into consideration when you're setting the request timeout for your service and in Cloud Run. Then the concurrency. The concurrency is the maximum request per container. So take a look at it. So for example, if you set the concurrency is one, that means if there, there are three requests come to your Cloud Run service, the Cloud Run service have to react the three instances because one instance can only serve one request, the concurrency is one. So the Cloud Run service have to react three instances to serve three requests. 
And for example, if your concurrency is 18, it means one services can serve up to 80 requests. Then if you have three requests, both of them will move to one container instance. So now the question is, how do I know the number of concurrency I should set? Then I have a quick answer for you. So you could use the development tip for turn your turning your concurrency. But if you run it the first time, the default concurrency of 80 is a good fit. Then just keep with it, keep with the default at the beginning. And then after that, you can improve and improve and improve based on your knowledge of service, about the service. Okay, then the next one is execution environment. Here we have the default, the first generation, the second generation. But if you <laughs> check it out, actually, you know, the defaults, where's that? The default one is also the first generation, the first one. So basically, we only have the first generation and the second generation. And yeah, for the first generation, you, you can see faster cold stars and the second generation about the network file system support full Linux compatibility, faster CPU and network performance. So it depends on you. You could take the documentation here. So I'll keep with the first one. Default one is also the first one. Just I always refer faster coaster, reduce the startup time for our service. But for example, maybe I don't wanna see any weird lock like that. You know, container sandbox, unsupport the Cisco, then maybe I'll go to the second one. The second generation, yeah, who knows that, right? So let's try it. I want view. I want to start up CPU boost here, and the second generation. Then we load again. Now check a lock. Then I hope that I won't see the kind of lock unsupport Cisco anymore then ting ting yes okay then I'll stick with the second generation from now <laughs> okay back to edit and normal Okay, finally, the last two things. Minimum number of indices and maximum number of indices. These characteristics will affect a lot of your money and your service behavior in Cloud Run. If we don't use, so we don't have to pay, right? This is because of this characteristic, minimum number of indices. By default, the minimum number of instances is zero as you see here. Then if there's no request coming, the service is automatically scaled down to zero. It means there's no CPU, no memory is consumed, and that's why you don't have to pay for the resource. But it also comes along with rollback, right? Since there's no instance in your service. If new requests come, they have to wait for the container startup time before really being processed, right? That's why if you don't want to suffer your customers in production environment, you usually want to warm up your service by setting this minimum number of instances different than zero. We should take a documentation here. The last one is maximum number of instances. And it depends on a lot of factors. For example, 
the depends on the region of cloud and service and CPU memory etc but I'll focus on the throughput and the connection pool about the throughput let's say if we have to serve 500 requests per second and for example the service only needs one second to return the response for request and the concurrency is 80 the number of requests one instant can serve is 80 so we will need at least 7 instances 7 instances and 1 instances can serve 80 so with 7 instances we can serve 560 requests and so that's why we need at least 7 instances to serve 500 requests and then in some holidays the traffic could be increased 3 times in that case we will need 3 times is 21 instances as the maximum number of instances of course in real world there's a lot of factors can affect your calculation but it's just the simple calculation that you need to take into account when you first create your service in Clarin. The second one I want to talk about is the connection pool. Actually, the number of connection that the database can support. For example, if your database only supports up to 200 connections, and the default number of connection in Spring Boot connection pool is 10. So you can only have 20 instances as the maximum number of instance because if you have 21 instances that means it needs 210 connection and it will exceed the number of connection that your database can support then you need to take care of that for example if you take a look at our service here then you see that for our service the connection pool is maximum is 5 connection I knew from my second video that the progress database I've been using only support up to 20 connections that's why I have to set the maximum connection here in my case is around 20 divided by equal 4 instances okay second generation sub CPU push then deploy okay but let's see then yeah new instances created connection to cloud sequence then okay okay next only took a second nine second around nine second to start a new service and that's it for today Thank you for watching.